Janan, I want to know what it's all about. And I want to begin with the most fundamental laws of nature, trying to understand how it all works. And as I look at the world, the concept of probabilistics, some people would say chance, is embedded throughout everything we see in the physical world, even though to many people it's not obvious. You've talked about chance probabilistics as a philosopher of physics, so I want to understand it in greater depth. So some people are surprised um, that it turns out, as we now think, that um, chance is fundamental, which is to say that ultimately, even at the most fundamental level of description, some stuff just happens. There's no reason, there's no way of predicting that it's going to happen, it just happens. I tend to be rather surprised that there's any regularity in the world. <laughs> Um, and given that there's some regularity in the world, there's no reason, I mean, just sort of a priori, just from, just from the, there's no reason that the, the clear light of reason is going to lead you to believe that we should be able to predict every state of the, the, um, the universe from the preceding state. We thought that for a long time, and we got so accustomed to expecting that that would be the case, that we were surprised to find otherwise. But I don't find it particularly surprising at all. So how, how do we understand how it really works at the most fundamental level? How is probabilistics built into the fabric of reality? The laws of nature, if quantum mechanics is true, um, or what most people think some descendant of quantum mechanics will retain the feature that the fundamental laws of nature allow you to predict not everything that's going to happen, but only to predict the probabilities with which various events that could possibly happen will happen. You now, is therefore probabilities, and, and this becomes multiple, you say probabilities, but if you have probabilities in every aspect of the, of the physical world at its most microscopic level, those probabilities amplify each other. So you, you would almost think, as you said, that why should there be any regularities at all? And yet we see enormous regularities and yet probabilistics built into it. Does that generate all the variety we see? Well, the variety could be actually in principle um, generated by just a, a kind of variety in the initial condition. So it, we think of the world as a four dimensional manifold of events. And we know that the fourth dimension being time. The fourth dimension being time. So three spatial dimensions um, extended in a fourth dimension, namely time. Now to have differentiation over time, all you need is a kind of differentiation at the initial conditions in the distribution of matter. Okay. So we have that, um, and that would be enough to differentiate sort of how things are in different parts of the universe and, and because of the processes that, that allow us to derive the state at one time from the state of, at another time, the differences that there are at present in the initial state would be retained in subsequent states. Um, what determinism would say is that we don't get any differences later without differences earlier, mm. effectively. Um, and what quantum physics shows us is that's not true either. We can have two initial states of a system or initial states of the world, which are identical up to a certain point, right, and diverge thereafter. And that moment can be uh, within any second, uh, within huge any second. numbers of, of, of opportunities for these, uh, uh, for these differences, for these probabilistic expressions. Right, so we get difference from sameness, and that's surprising. And uh, what does that say about the, the nature of reality? What does that say to you? It says that the separation of regularity from randomness um, turns out to be not all confined to the space-like dimensions, by which I mean, if you're in a deterministic universe, then there can be differentiation across space, right? but over time, there's a perfect sort of dependence of one state on another. And Only one way you can go. That's exactly right. But if you're looking at the universe as a four-dimensional manifold of events, and you recognize that the universe is indeterministic, then there's a kind of sprinkling of, 
of irregularity also along the time-like dimension. And does that, um, if you take that to its, uh, to its logical conclusion, it would then be surprising there's any regularity at all. That's exactly right. So you're more surprised that there's regularity out of what you know to be the, the deep probabilistic foundations of the world than the other way around. Yes, it's the regularity that has to be explained. As, a, as opposed to the diversity that has That's to be explained. Right. So how do you explain it? In so explanation is a complicated concept. To explain something, you always have to explain it from something else. And um, in physics, we explain one thing from another. And ultimately, the things that don't get explained, the unexplained explainers, are the first principles. And in physics, the first principles are the initial conditions and the laws. So you don't explain the initial conditions, and you don't explain the laws. But you explain any particular event or any particular regularity by tracing it to the initial conditions plus the laws. So in physics, the stochasticity, that is the randomness or the departures from perfect regularity, um, that doesn't get explained. But any particular regularity can be explained by the fundamental laws, which themselves don't get explained. So you're always, no matter what sort of explanation, no, no matter what level you're describing, you know, what science you're using, there's going to be some unexplained explainers. And in physics, the unexplained explainers are the initial conditions, but the laws, end of story.